Oh, this is um, first time I've got this machine to print something useful. I've done a couple of test prints. Where I printed uh, these little things here. Uh, it's just a loop. You can see there's a whole bunch of extrusion problems, but uh, yeah, this is the first print. But uh, now I've calibrated a little bit better and I've actually got it to print something a little bit more useful. This is a little puzzle. Um, <coughs> and uh, this printer that we're looking at is um, has the name Voyager D1 for the uh, Star Trek Voyager. Um, as when I was building it, there was a point when it actually, part of it looked like the Voyager. D is for Delta and 1 is version 1. It's very much a prototype machine but um, it works and it's been designed from the ground up out of aluminium uh, using a precision engineering uh, workshop, Redwood Engineering in Auckland and uh, has got a few unique features such as uh, a dual belt system uh, which connects to the carriages and the motor has got a shaft going right the way through uh, with a pulley on each side. Um, the width between centres of these 12mm smooth rods is about 114mm and um, the width between centres from the bulls here I think might be 70 or 86 or something. The uh, carriage is made out of 3mm um, plate of aluminium, <coughs> laser cut, and uh, and then bent at 45 degrees to make that angle there. The balls are a pretty low quality ball bearing um, from a kid's toy, and they've got a hole in it with a 9mm uh, kite rod. and. Um, are attached via this spring system which I've invented and um, that pulls everything together and stops everything falling apart. There are no magnets holding it together but of course without the springs you could put magnets behind uh, you know put magnets simply straight across there and this will work just like a magnetic system in the same fashion. It's, um, there's advantages of either design and uh, <clears throat> the hot end on it is the first hot end I've ever had on a 3D printer. It's um, been going for a year, over a year now, and it's still working, so I put it on this machine. The uh, ball bearings are 15mm ball bearings, and they're 250mm long between, uh, between centre to centre, and those holes in the back of the carriages are 11 millimeters um, in diameter. The um, electronics is probably giving this the most improvement of anything else. This is a smoothie board based electronics and it's running on um, a 32 bit ARM microcontroller and running 32 steps micro stepping um, stepper controller as well so um, it's a massive improvement on resolution to the stepper motors and smoothness of, um, of the frequency and steps um, I think this is a 120 megahertz uh, CPU driving it it's running on a 12 volt system but it can be easy enough upgraded to 24 volts simply by um, by using a 24 volt power supply and then reducing the hot end and heated bed and fans uh, to about 50% using pulse width modulation. That way you can keep 24 volts on the stepper motors and that gives you a lot better performance. These stepper motors are NEMA 23 stepper motors as opposed to the NEMA 17 which are found in most 3D printers. NEMA 23 are more commonly found on um, on CNC, little CNC machines um, 
and this machine is a little bit more powerful than the average 3D printer so I've put some uh, better stepper drivers and stuff on it. <coughs> The precision that's gone into the frame is absolutely second to none. I designed the frame entirely in Design Spark Mechanical, which is free software, and um, it was all designed around knowing the tools of a uh, production engineering workshop so that I could get the best precision with the least amount of, um, of processes involved to make each part. These parts at the bottom is actually exactly the same as this part at the top, only it's been cut in half, straight through the middle. So therefore I've, I need nine pieces like this. This piece here is simply the same as that, but it's been turned over 90, 180 degrees to give you the mirror image. And um, everything's been precision engineered to upwards of uh, 0.1 millimeter to 0.01 millimeter on some parts. <clears throat> Underneath here, I'm using um, little pilot holes uh, and pins to make sure that the angles and positioning of these bars coming out are exactly spot on. There's a three millimeter little uh, pins going up there, and those holes have been drilled with absolute precision. The screws are simply holding it in place, but the pins are what's giving it its precision. And that's a um, that's an engineering technique that um, is what you do if you want really, really good precision. The extruder is just an old extruder um, that I was running on another machine. I just pulled it off and whacked it straight on here for the purpose of getting up and printing as fast as possible. But I would like to make an aluminium extruder. Um, to replace that, but that's not really important at this stage. The carriages are using um, bronze bushings for the um, for for the bearings, and uh, I think these came as a 50 millimeter length bronze bushing, and I cut them up into four segments, so that I only needed three bronze bushings per 3D printer. Um, that was a cost savings, really. If I had um, if I had six bushings per printer, it would probably make it easier to assemble. Um, but either way, this still works. All in all, I'm really happy with this printer um, so far. There's a bunch of inaccuracies which I can see already that I can uh, fix, and it's pretty much all around. Um, getting things tighter, such as um, these are just held in place with with cable ties, whereas I should uh, lock everything together with screws and make it more rigid. And um, you know, so there's lots of improvements like that which I can do. And I'm also going to uh, add. <coughs> um, basically rubber isolated dampers for the motors. These here go in here. However at the moment this is too wide to fit within this design so I have to modify it a different way in order to be able to fit these in the system. But once I add these here that will reduce pretty much all the vibration and also make it quieter um, to print. So here it is, the Voyager D1. Um, I hope you've enjoyed it, and this is going to be for sale. Price is between $1,600 and $1,800 New Zealand dollars. We haven't figured out all the nuts and bolts, but it will be hopefully around that price, and um, it will be come as a kit set. It's very much an advanced printer. I would not recommend it as a first-time printer. However, it's got some really great features when it comes to calibration. Um, as the things put together so accurately that the calibration is extremely simple and quick. It took about uh, five or six minutes to calibrate it after I'd put it together and I've even made a calibration guide specifically to do it quickly. Um, for the calibration you need of course a dial indicator 
and uh, that's just a little bit that I made that attaches straight onto the top here. I can pull this off and put the dial indicator on and then we're away. So yeah, hope you like that. Uh, I'm Tim Jacobson and yeah, enjoy. All these files will be released um, through my GitHub account um, sometime in the next couple of weeks where you can download everything and uh, start tattooing yourself. Thank you.